So Barry, the original model uh, predicted there was going to be about 2 million people dead in the United States. Then it was forecasted to 1 million. Now it's down. It's looking to be, you know, very much under 100,000 people, perhaps even 60,000 people. Um, do you think that there should have been a different way that this shutdown went about? My idea for it is, hey, quarantine all the people who are 65 plus senior citizens and anyone who had asthma or any pre-existing conditions, get everyone else a mask and let everyone else kind of do their thing. I will admit that there is a slight flaw in that in the sense that we did not have billions and billions of masks lying around. Maybe we should for next time. But if we had the masks, is that something that would have worked or am I just kind of making stuff up here? Uh, you may be making it up, but for a non-doctor, it sounds good to me. The facts, Thank you. I appreciate that. Not the, a doctor, fact, but he does play fact, one on TV on occasion. That's a whole other website, though. <laughs> I, I, I actually agree with your facts. The original uh, projection out of Oxford, England, for the United States was 2 million dying. Um, they did it based on certain assumptions, which may or may not be right. They then revised it down to a million. Then they went to half a million. And the latest projection uh, out of the White House task force is maybe 60,000. So 60,000 is now, by coincidence, the projected number of deaths in the United States from the regular flu this year. But get this, the regular flu is projected to afflict 50 to 56 million Americans this year, like I've already had it. Uh, at least I think it was the regular flu. There's no way to know now. And I'm still here, and it was horrible for about four days. Do you crush the entire economy of the world, of our country, of all the regular people that are out of money for a death rate equal to the regular flu? Or, or your plan? And honestly, your plan makes a lot of sense, and here's why. The majority, the vast majority of the people who die from COVID-19 are over 65 with a pre-existing condition, such as heart disease, high blood pressure, emphysema, they're smokers. They're not able to fend off the normal infections that younger people do. If you take out the older people out of all the deaths in the world, the death rate drops by about 75%. So of the 60,000, 75% of those are the people that would be subject to your quarantine. And everybody else can go about their normal business and be fine. This is the flu. And we could have a normal world again, unless there's a political agenda. And the more this shutdown stays in place and people are getting hungrier and they're broke and they're not paying their rent and the car payment isn't getting made and they're ruining their credit, it leads me to believe this isn't about COVID-19. Got this, to agree. With, you know, with something you know, like this, how do they miss the projections that far? I mean, how do you go from there's going to be 2 million dying, which is like, you know, 7% of the population or something like that in the state. How do they go from that to, uh, you know, 60,000? And so far, it's what, 15 or 16,000? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost 19, I think. But it's, you know, the old adage, garbage in, garbage out. If your assumptions are dumb, and the data that you're acquiring is not adequate, and China lied and lied and lied and lied and is still lying about everything about this disease, then you are creating assumptions out of the air based on best guess. And that's the problem. Nobody knows the real facts. We still don't know where the Wuhan coronavirus originated. Is it a wet market? Is it in the uh, biological weapons laboratory? Is it created in a test tube and then released for world population control? I don't know, but the fact is it came out of Wuhan, China. We know that, and, and the curve is flattening very rapidly. In some cases, these field hospitals that have been set up, like the one in Seattle, it was enormous. They treated nobody, and they dismantled the hospital already. They didn't have cases to put in the hospital.
So, Barry, what would you say to someone who says the reason why we have so few deaths, like, let's just say, yeah, we'll only have, you know, projected 60,000 deaths, but there's going to be a lot less people, at least in terms of confirmed cases, that will be infected because of these social distancing measures. What do you say to the argument of, yeah, we could have just let this run its course like the flu. Maybe it would have been a little bit worse than the flu, but you still would have had, you know, half a million Americans dead, a million Americans, and sure, they're elderly, sure, they had pre-existing conditions, but their lives are still worthwhile. What would you say to someone who said that to you? Well, the social distancing knocked this completely out of the park, quite frankly. It, it's not the business shutdown. It's just not getting near anybody else. And you can do that. Look, I just went to the pharmacy a couple days ago, and everybody's walking around away from everybody else. Uh, I was at a grocery store, same thing. I was at Costco, same thing. We can turn loose the economy and people just don't hug, kiss and brush up against other people. And maybe for a month or two, we wear masks. The truth of the matter is the death rate, even at 60,000, may be wildly exaggerated. I'm gonna tell you something that's shocking, but I've seen it from a dozen sources, so I believe it. In many cases, when death certificates are written out, there are health department advises that are going out to the doctor saying, if the person had COVID-19, put that down as the cause of death. And then the doctor goes, well, uh, he also had emphysema and he only had 20% heart function because he had a heart attack. So I'm not sure what killed him. And they're being instructed, put down COVID-19. And, and do you think there's a political agenda behind that? Because some research I saw a few weeks ago was saying that a lot of the reason why Italy had such a higher fatality rate is because they measured just what you were saying, the comorbidity between COVID-19 and those other diseases. Do you think the fact that they're doing that here in the United States is because they're trying to make the numbers go up? Because they've realized that maybe their quarantine has worked almost too well, uh, both in terms of killing the economy and killing this virus. Yeah, that, that's the great question. And I think the answer, and I think this is really sad, and the answer is yes. Um, the death rate keeps dropping on every single projection. And if you factor out the people that might have had two or three causes of death, maybe that 60,000 number is really 30 or 20 or 15. You know, the meme that goes around all the time that you see on the internet, where the guy gets run over by a truck and then the lady is told, COVID-19, put that down as the cause of death. Nobody's checking. It's, it's a morbid joke, but it may actually be true. And that scares the hell out of me that government officials and public health officials are being told from somewhere above them in the bureaucracy, don't make us look any stupider than we already look. We've closed down the economy. We have crushed, crushed the financial savings of almost every American, and we overreacted to something that ain't that bad that we probably already have fixed. Look, 95% of the country, as Trump has said, could be turned loose tomorrow without any probable norm, uh, measurable health effects in a negative way. Why aren't we doing that? And why is the pushback on the president so great. Look, I'm not being political about it. It doesn't matter if you like Trump or you hate Trump. You ought to care about what's in your wallet. You ought to care about how you're going to pay your bills and that you want to have a life again. We all do. Barry, quick question for you. Um, does it worry you, you know, they have the, the daily uh, White House uh, COVID show or whatever it is they call it, the updates. Uh, does it worry you? I mean, I think Trump comes off pretty credible in there. But does it worry you that everybody else up there, almost without exception, they've been in the government forever? In other words, if you pull up the resume, even as, as respected as Dr. Fauci is and Dr. Bricks, uh, if you look it up, they've never had a real gig. I mean, they, they have worked for the government since day one. Does that worry you? I, uh, I, <laughs> I try not to be too uh, conspiratorial, but as an example, uh, Fauci, has been on Bill Gates's payroll for a long time. They're very close friends. And he's paid by Gates's foundation, which is pushing virus research. 
and population control and um, dissemination of new vaccine research and so on. Is that a conflict? Maybe. Is he on the wrong side of the truth? I don't know. But, you know, the old adage, follow the money. Uh, if the guy's getting paid by someone who's pushing a vaccine and Bill Gates wants the economy shut down for at least the end of this year, based on what I read yesterday, oh boy, that scares the hell out of me. And it scares me for two reasons. Is there another motive? And is it about who gets elected president in November? Ironically, the new poll out today, Trump's approval rating has never been higher than it is right now on Good Friday slash Aloha Friday. Why? Because people think he's doing a decent job with his team handling this crisis. And I got news for you. If he announces in a couple weeks, okay, May 1st, we're relaxing. These companies can go back to work. You can open up the freeways. You can go get your job back. You can open restaurants as long as this and this and this roller file are, are, are followed. Kent, are we back to your question? And Governor Newsom and Governor Pritzker and Governor Cuomo and so on say no. What's going to happen then?